So we left off with, um, remember Jesus was doing um, miracles. Mm -hmm. uh, faith of the centurion, he, he, Jesus healed his uh, servant. And Jesus raised the little son. So John's disciples told John about all these things Jesus had been doing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So calling two of his disciples to him, he sent them to the Lord Jesus to ask, Are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? Your turn. When the men came to Jesus, they said, John the Baptist sent us to you to ask, Are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? At that very time, Jesus cured many who had diseases, sicknesses, and evil spirits, and gave sight to many who were blind. So he replied to the messengers, Go back and report to John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleaned, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. So, um, when Jesus was baptized, remember John the Baptist testified, this is... This is it. This is the Messiah, right? Well, John's in prison right now, I believe. And so John's having doubts about his faith. Okay. So okay. He, sent, he, sent, he sends disciples to ask Jesus if, if is he sure he's the, the one to come, the Messiah? And Jesus' response was go back and report to him what you have seen in because so they saw Jesus cure many who had diseases, sicknesses, drive out evil spirits, give sight to the blind. Okay, so it says, um, the blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. The good news of God's salvation, all right, mm -hmm. the poor in spirit. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble. Stone. Okay. Mm -hmm. After John's messengers left, Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed swayed by the wind? If not, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No, those who wear expensive clothes and indulge in luxury are in palaces. But what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written. I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. I tell you, among those born of women, there is no one greater than John. Yet the one who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. Okay, so after the messengers left, Jesus talked to begin to speak to the crowd about John. He asked them, because many of those who were following Jesus had followed John, okay? Mm -hmm. People seeking God. And he asked them, what did you go out in the wilderness to see? Because you remember John the Baptist lived out in the wilderness, mm -hmm. eating locusts, wearing camel hair, that kind of thing. A reed swayed by the wind. I, I read in college that, um, I believe what that meant was um, reeds tall plants that grow under in the water and the tops of them like this so when the wind blows they would sway right mm -hmm. but not John 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 was not a reed swayed by the wind you see John was a very firm in his belief in God and he didn't seem to really care what anybody thought he was going to speak the truth even if it upset powerful people mm -hmm. upset Pharisees upset Herod he didn't care. He wasn't going to be swayed in what he believed in. He was very firm in his faith in God. Um, and he said, no. If not, what did you go to see? A man dressed in fine clothes. Well, clearly not. He dressed in camel hair clothes, right? Mm -hmm. <sighs> what did you go to see then? A prophet? Yes. I tell you. And more than just a prophet. This is... Um, Probably the greatest prophet, right? This is the one that was prophesied about that God will send his messenger 
ahead of Jesus to prepare his way. And so up until the till till Jesus he said, Born of women, there's no one greater than John. So John the Baptist would not have been a Christian because Christianity was not yet established. John would have just been a follower of God under Judaism. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so prior to the establishment of the church, Jesus is saying, Among those born of women, there is none greater than John. That's quite a statement. Um, yet, the one who is the least in the kingdom of God, greater than John. What does that mean? I'm not sure. Perhaps he's saying, even the one who is the least in the church is greater than John the Baptist. His, his, when Christ died was resurrection and the church was started, it's a brand new thing, okay? Mm -hmm. All the people, even the tax collectors, when they heard Jesus' words, acknowledged that God's way was right because they had been baptized by John. But the Pharisees and the experts in the law rejected God's purpose for themselves because they had not been baptized by John. Okay. So all the people, even the tax collectors, which many were considered, considered them like the lowest of the low, you know, the worst of sinners, you know, the traitors went to work for the Romans to tax their own people. They were definitely looked down upon as the dredge of society. So all the people, even the tax collectors, when they heard Jesus' words, they were repentant. They acknowledged, yes, this is it. This is God's way. God is right. They had been baptized by John the Baptist. They hadn't been baptized into the church, per se, at this point. They had been baptized John the Baptist for um, repentance and forgiveness of sins. But the Pharisees, the experts in the law, they rejected God's purpose for themselves because they had not been baptized by John. Jesus said there was a tax collector who came and he came to the temple, I believe, and he wouldn't even look, raise his eyes to the heaven and, you know, said, God have mercy on me, a sinner. But the Pharisees beat their chest and said, I thank you, God. I'm not like that tax collector over there. And we see here again, the people, even the tax collectors, were repentant and acknowledged God's way is right, but not so the Pharisees, the experts in the law. They rejected God, and therefore they rejected God's purpose for their lives. Jesus went on to say, To what, then, can I compare the people of this generation? What are they like? They are like children sitting in the marketplace and calling out to each other. We played the pipe for you, and you did not dance. We sang a dirge, and you did not cry. For John the, Pap for John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine, and you say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and you say, here is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners, but wisdom is provided right by all her children. Proved, right. Outproved. So, I remember reading that some study the scriptures believe what this means here. We played the pipe for you and you did not dance. We sing a dirge and you did not cry. Basically, what he's saying is the people of that generation are never happy. See, they, they played the pipe for him, and then they played a happy song, and you wouldn't dance. So they're saying, and we played a sad song, and you wouldn't cry. See, so yeah. they're not happy with Jesus. No matter what he does, they find fault. For instance, John the Baptist came fasting. Okay. So he neither ate bread nor drank wine. Okay, and you weren't happy with that. You said he has a demon. So remember, they asked Jesus about John's disciples and the Pharisees' disciples fast. Why don't your disciples fast? And he said, because when the bridegroom's with you, how can you fast? But the day will come when the bridegroom will be taken away, and then they will fast. But here's an example of a man of God fasting, um, denying himself. 
comfort, denying himself food and drink, denying himself uh, shelter, he's living in the wilderness, denying himself most food, right, you know, eating off, <laughs> eating bugs, essentially, and they're not happy with him, okay, and then Jesus comes, the Son of Man, eating and drinking, so doing what I guess they're saying they should have won because they weren't happy with John fasting, so Jesus comes eating and drinking, and they're not happy with him, and they're saying, here's a glutton and a drunkard, a glutton is someone who overeats, indulges in too much food, and a drunkard. He is not only that, but worse yet, he's a friend of tax collectors and sinners. The, the truth of the matter is, I don't think it had anything to do with whether they were eating or drinking or wearing or sick. What I had to do with is they didn't like the message coming from God. It really wasn't the vessel they had a problem with. It was the message. Because really, John the Baptist and Jesus had very similar messages, as in telling the Pharisees, X was in the law, you're wrong. You're not right with God. You think you're right with God, but your actions and the thoughts of your hearts are wrong. And they did not like that message, you see. Mm -hmm. They were not like the people up here uh, in verses um, in verse 29. It says, all the people, even the tax collectors, when they heard Jesus' words, acknowledged that God's way was right. The Pharisees and the experts of the law, they would not acknowledge that. So they hated the message. So therefore they hated the messenger. They hated John the Baptist and they hated Jesus because they hated his message. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, but, um, but wisdom is proved right by all her children. <clears throat> if I remember right, what I read was that there's a thought, the belief is um, folks can argue and say things, but time will tell who is right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, and time would tell who who's speaking wisdom. And um, and when they crucified the Lord, and he was um, and when God raised him from the dead, his resurrection was proof that Jesus was the one speaking the right message and not them. But um. Of course, they still denied it. But on Jesus' return, Scripture says, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. So time will tell who's right and who's wrong. Jesus anointed by a sinful woman. When one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. A woman in that town who lived a sinful life and learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house so she came there with an alabaster drawer of perfume. As she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who is touching him and what kind of woman she is, that she is a sinner. Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two people owed money to a certain money lender. One owed them 500 denarii and the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back, so he forgave the debts of both. Now which of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt forgiven. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. Then he torn to toward the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman from the time I entered has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, as her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven a little, loves a little. Then Jesus said to her, Your sins are forgiven. The other guests began to say among themselves, Who is this who even forgives sins? Jesus said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Uh, 
<clears throat> so Jesus um, was invited by a Pharisee, right, to have dinner with him. I'm assuming at the Pharisee's house. Yeah, he went to the Pharisee's house. He reclined at the table. Uh, my understanding is the culture in that day, they didn't have tables with chairs. Like we said, uh, they kind of reclined on the floor. Um, so there's a woman in whatever town this is. She had lived a sinful life. And she learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house. So she came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. Must have been expensive. She stood there at his feet weeping. So she was repentant and sorrowful, it appears, for her life. Okay, And she was crying and wet his feet with her tears. So then she wiped his feet with her hair. So essentially she cleaned his feet with her tears and her hair. Okay, And then she kissed his feet and poured perfume on them. So she was very sorrowful and repentant. Most people, probably in this day too, would have considered the feet one of the less desirable parts of the body, but yet she was willing to clean them with her hair and kiss them. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, if he were a prophet, he would know who was touching him and what kind of a woman she is, that she is a sinner. So if he were a prophet, this Pharisee believed he would have the miraculous power to know who this person was without knowing this person. You see, he would know what a sinner she is if he was really a prophet and that she's touching him because he thought if this man were a man of God, he would not allow a person like this to even touch him. because She'd be unclean and unholy, you see. She's a sinner. Of course, the Pharisee, like all of us, was a sinner too. But I don't think he acknowledged that he was a sinner, okay? And so, Jesus answered him. So, Jesus perhaps heard his thoughts, okay? And said, Simon, I have something to tell you. And he said, tell me, teacher. And he, so, he's going to give him an example. Two people owe money to a money lender. One owes him 500 Denari and the other 50. Neither of them can pay back the money lender, so he forgives both their debts. Which one of them you think will love him more? And Simon replied, The one who has been forgiven the bigger debt. And Jesus said, You judge correctly. Because um, cause he was forgiven a lot more. So he turned towards the woman, and then he said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house, and you did not give me any water for my feet. But she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. I read that it was custom in those days because uh, most individuals in Israel would have been wearing sandals on their feet, those socks. So when they walked on these dusty roads, they would have had very dusty feet. And so it was custom that when you had a guest over, you would have provided them with some sort of pan or container with water in it to wash their feet, maybe dry their feet, to clean their feet when they came into your house. It would have just been maybe common courtesy. So the Pharisee didn't even give Jesus common courtesy, okay? But this woman wept and cleaned his feet with her hair and tears. Um, you did not give me a kiss, but he says from the time I entered, she is not Stop kissing my feet. Perhaps in their culture it also would have been common to greet someone with a kiss. Okay. Um, not only did he not give Jesus a, a small appreciation of a kiss. But this woman wouldn't stop kissing Jesus' feet. So the Pharisee wouldn't even kiss Jesus' cheek. And she's kissing Jesus' feet. Um, put, Pharisee wouldn't put oil on his, Jesus' head, but she put perfume on my feet. And so he said, um, her many sins have been forgiven, as her great love has shown. So <clears throat> her great love for Jesus was, was due to um, her great appreciation 
for her many sins being forgiven. But the Pharisee didn't have this love for Jesus because he thought he was self-righteous and didn't need Jesus' forgiveness. And so um, sometimes we see where maybe those in this life uh, who have lived um, very sinful lives, um, when they come to Christ, they sometimes have great love because they, they realize and appreciate how much they've been forgiven. But that doesn't mean we have to be forgiven for, I don't know, um, maybe murder or something to love the Lord. Because we're all sinners and He deserves all of our love. And we should appreciate all of our sins that are forgiven. Um, so Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. And the other guests, perhaps Pharisees, began to say among themselves, Who is this who forgives sins? Perhaps, as we've seen earlier, they considered um, Jesus being blasphemous because only God can forgive sins. And here's this man, they thought, nothing but a man, going around forgiving sins. Who does he think he is, right? Well, he's God, but they didn't recognize that. So he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. So she I believe what the Lord meant was go in peace with God. Didn't mean she was going to be in peace with everybody in her life because um, the Pharisees may, um, <laughs> perhaps they may have hated her at this moment. Perhaps they were jealous. If anything, she made them look bad. So I doubt she was going to go in peace with them, but go in peace with God. As long as we have peace with God, <clears throat> that's the most important thing, right? doesn't guarantee we're going to have peace with people. The Lord says if we follow him, some people are going to hate us. Okay, But peace with God. Better to have peace with God than peace with people. We should live in peace with our neighbor as much as it's up to us. Um, he said your faith has saved you, right? And we read elsewhere in scripture where it says faith without works is dead. So it really wasn't her kissing and washing his feet and pouring perfume on his feet. Those acts in and of themselves do not appear to be what has saved her from her sins and given her peace with God. It is her faith that Jesus is the Son of God and that he can forgive sins. That's what saved her, but her actions was proof of her faith. Okay? So... Let us do the same.